take the really young ones, we take the ripe ones, yeah. but we don't want to take ones that are kind of, oh, this is still okay. Like if they start to wilt a little bit, then uh, uh, you won't quite have the same essence. And, and you just this here is ideal. This is too young to harvest. This one and this one is ideal pretty well. This, this, this. This one here I wouldn't harvest yet. It's a little small, but it's mature. So you can really tell with the inside here. The one you're standing on, that's a really perfect example. Look at the colors, how it goes to the center. Can you get that iridescence effect or am I just getting that from here? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's gorgeous, eh? Calendula Okanagan. <laughs> that's what I call them anyways. An old German proverb, je bitterer dem Mund, dem Magen gesund, which means the bitterer to your taste buds, the better it is for you. Totally. You know, that's so true. It's not that bitter though. It is no, no, they're still bad, quite young. Yeah. They're still quite young. If you do one of these here, try this, this will be even less... More, uh, um, less bitter? Yeah, this will be even less bitter. And with the dandelion, yeah. if you harvest the dandelion leaves at this time of year, early yeah. in the season, where they're nice and young and succulent, you end up with a wonderful salad, whereas if you harvest them later in the season when the leaves are bigger, yeah. you end up with uh, um, something that's quite a bit more bitter. Just like that, look. Yeah. Just pluck. Yeah. Pluck. Twist. And normally, oh, and, and I'd give them a tap before too, because these flowers have a tendency of having uh, quite a bit of spiders on them. Um, when it's this early in the season, you don't really have to be too concerned with if you're harvesting like this to take too much, like look, I'm leaving this so, much on there. Yeah. Normally, um, I usually try to go into an area and um, take about 20 to 30% of something oh. that I'm harvesting. That way you're not doing damage. Yeah. And if I'm harvesting rootstock, like up there, there's no sense for it because they're turning it into a vineyard. Yeah. But if I'm in nature and I'm harvesting rootstock or anything like that, I usually try to have seeds with me. So the disturbed ground that is now ready, put some seeds on there and that's stewardship. Yeah. <coughs> so you take wow. something, you that's leave something. That's the way to go. Yeah, that is the way to go. If, if you intend to have this uh, available for your uh, great, 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 great grandchildren. And I love kids. And uh, so I think it just makes sense, you know. And when you know your areas, then what you do is you've harvested your calendula seeds in the fall for oil extraction and you of course keep enough seeds so that when you go out in the spring, like now, that you can then when you do this, when you harvest the root, leave seeds there. So you, theoretically, if you do it properly, by the time you're done, there will be more of it. And that's what First Nations people have done here in the Okanagan. I personally believe one of the reasons why we have so much arrowroot flowers and the arrowroot plant growing here is because uh, it was culturally assisted. And thank you very much, First Nations West Bank and First Nations everywhere for the great job. So how much we put together here, uh, because there isn't a full kilo, there's 900 grams in here, I normally use a kilo. So we're gonna improvise without a scale here to create a kilo. Just gonna pretend we know what 100 grams are. One and two. And the first one was a little smaller, so I made the second one a little bit bigger. So this is about it. This will equate up to about between four and five hundred grams of flowers, fresh flowers, with one kilogram of coconut butter. That's for salf making, a traditional salf making recipe. This is right now on high, just to get the uh, coconut butter melted fairly quick. And once it's melted, you want to simmer this at a low temperature for 10 minutes. Now after this is done its thing for 10 minutes, we will just let it sit and cool off for Tomorrow we will. You put a cloth over it so you don't have any uh, any dust particles or contaminants fall in it. You don't want to put a direct lid on it because then moisture will rise and you'll have water drop in it, and that can help the spoil factor, right? So uh, 
we tomorrow heat it up again. Is it still boiling? No. Tomorrow we'll heat it up again, bring it to the bubbling stage, give it about five minutes and then let it cool off and then we shall strain it through a cheesecloth and um, there is our base for the salve. Then after that we add a uh, little bit of high potency vitamin E oil to it, preferably between 30 and 40,000 IU and that helps with the preservation of it and I find coconut butter is uh, you have to be careful with any kind of small particles that are in there because if you have something floating on top of your salve that's sitting in a container that little contaminant will work like a wick or a fuse between the oxygen provided through the air and uh, um, it will kind of literally feed that into the matter you have and uh, plant matter coconut uh, butter and air can uh, potentially spoil it fairly fast. Yeah. Take a look, this is what it's looking like right now. Let it cool off again to the point that we can touch it and then strain it through a cheesecloth or, I mean, that's just very basic filtration, you know, I mean, 100 micron stainless steel filtration would be Professional, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, and then as you then separate the plant matter yeah. from the uh, coconut base that now has the healing elements and essential oils and so far infused into it via heat. Mm -hmm. You can do that with oil, which we'll start today. We'll be using grapeseed oil to infuse flowers via sunlight. Okay. Then you put them in a glass jar. Put the flowers in there, put the oil on it, yeah. close it up, put it in the sun and then that way over a period of two weeks to a month, I sometimes leave it in for two to four months. I've even left them sitting for a full year just to get everything out. Wow. So we have the young plant matter separated out first. Look at the strong color coming out of here. Okay. Now this is going to make unbelievable stuff. And then afterwards, once you've squeezed this all out, the uh, calendula flowers themselves. This can be used medicinally. Uh, I've given these uh, little flower buds with the oil in it mm -hmm. to a dog that had severe tumors all over the place in combination with Tibetan snow lotus, which is a, a, a mushroom, and uh, greatly reduced the tumors. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them completely gone, and a real big. The re he had one really large tumor. He was supposed to be put down at eight, and he's now just over ten, and he's doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. you know? And it was only used for about. A month on him. All you do is you just get your flats or these flats and uh, lie your flowers or whatever you're drying loosely on there and you can just stack them like this and you can make a that's great for in the house. Mm. You know, it's not messy, it's on small scale. You don't have to like perforate the cardboard or anything like mm. that? Do you perforate the cardboard or anything? No, just like this. The important thing is if you're using cardboard, you can't just put one box with the other like that got to breathe so you want to go like this and like this and like this and like that and you don't want to like pile it full otherwise it can't breathe so never stop asking questions and you can see when you first infuse the oil it takes a while before it goes all the way to the bottom so you want to do this carefully and give it a moment to make sure everything is submerged properly so look this was full and so it's just working its way through and then we'll leave these here, these beautiful jars, if that's all right. We'll yeah. put them right here in the window, hey, Great, yeah. right on these ones here. All of this here we're going to want to put in a cool dark place, like somewhere in a ca uh, cupboard here or so. Where would you recommend? Sure. For, you know what, if there's room in the fridge, the fridge will be hot. Awesome. Right awesome. awesome. That would be wonderful, man. That would be so wonderful. Okay. 
medicine cabinet. Do you keep stuff in the fridge or do you keep it in the medicine cabinet? Normally in the medicine cabinet, but this isn't a totally finished product. Yes.